Tween Beginner Embroidery Workshop, Episode 5. All right, tweens, you've learned your stitches, and now it's time for your final project. We are going to embroider a felt teddy bear. Now, these you'll need a pair of scissors, you'll need some glue, and from your kits, you will need your um, beige felt, your lighter, darker brown felt, your black felt, your pink and black embroidery floss, and your brown and white embroidery floss, and of course, your needle. Now, everything here is just a suggestion in terms of the stitches that are used. You can use whatever ones you like. All right, first off, you're going to take your practice stuff off your hoop, and you're going to place your uh, beige felt over the edge of the hoop on the, and then secure the outside part. You don't want to center it because you're going to want to use the, some of the scraps to make ears, but you want to make sure that it's um, hanging out the other side all the way around. Make sure your outside hoop is nice and tight and your other portion is taut and you secured your little screw bolt there. Everything looks good. And then we can start with the snout or the nose. And you're going to use, uh, well, first, it'll be easiest if you use the outside, uh, trim off a big chunk of the excess so that you don't have to uh, have it in your way. And put it aside, we'll use that for the ears later. All right. So now we're going to work on the snout. My needle's in the way here. And for that, I like kind of a diamond shape, or um, in this case, I'm going to make it kind of shaped like a, like a tortilla chip. Um, I'm going to use my brown floss and my darker brown felt. You can use a pencil to outline your shape first if it makes it easier. It's not going to show up well here on the video, but you can get the idea of what I'm going for. Um, by just kind of sketching the shape of the nose that I want. And then using my scissors to trim it. And then I'll trim it some more um, once I've cut it out to get it to the shape that I really like. If it's not even, put that aside. And it's a little big on one side, so I'm going to trim it up. I'm looking for something, in this instance, a little bit uh, tortilla chip, like a Dorito shape. Kind of that triangle. Straighten the edge a little bit here. That's good. I can throw away, I mean, throw away my little bitty scraps, put aside my dark brown felt. And that's where I'm going to put my nose my center. I'm going to take a good amount of my brown floss. You should have plenty. You don't need to use unravel at all. I'm just going to take, you know, less than a foot here, maybe 11 inches or so. And I'm going to go ahead and split it into two sections with three strands each because this is a six strand floss. because I don't want it to be especially thick. I'll put one half aside for later. And thread my floss. All right. Centering it. And I'm going to do a running stitch all around the outer edge of my triangle here to secure it in place. 
And I think the running stitch looks really good on this uh, piece. It likes to pull up at first, so you might want to hold it down with your thumb while you're uh, doing your first couple of stitches. Make sure you're leaving your tail as, uh, as you usually do. And I'm just going to leave a little space and go around the outer edge here with some running stitches. It doesn't matter the size of the stitch you use. Um, just try to keep your stitch sizes uh, consistent. It'll help the overall look of your project if they all kind of look the same. And it doesn't really matter where you start on here. You can start on any side. And don't be afraid to turn your work if you need to as you're putting your stuff in place. Sometimes, uh, because of the nature of felt, you might find a spot in it that's a little hard to push your needle through. Just kind of wiggle it around until you, you reach that spot, uh, get it through. There's a couple places in the project here where I had a little issue. See, like right there. Just giving it a little wiggle sometimes will help you get it through. That must have been a very dense area of felt. Continuing around. The felt I'm using here is a lot less dark in, than in my original sample because I wasn't able to get that dark, dark brown felt. But I think the stitching shows up much better on this one anyway. Besides, bears come in all kinds of colors, right? Couple more stitches. And then I can finish it off. Get the start of my thread here out of the way. Your thread should be super secure, but if you're feeling anxious about it, you can, you know, kind of tack it down with the extra brown here on the um, at the end of your needle kind of just make sure it doesn't go through to the other side And then you 
can just trim the excess. If I can find my scissors. Um, in, in this point, my needle had come off my floss, and so I had to refloss it. It happens to everyone at some point. There you go. Now I can trim the excess. Perfect. All right. Next up, we're going to work on the ears. But first I'm going to trim away this extra bit. I want to trim it as close to the top of the back of your hoop as possible. You may have to work around the screw there for a little bit, but just keep trimming along the outer edge there, keeping the interior in uh, secured in there between the two hoops. This will let you um, secure the ears without this all this extra fabric in the way. See, it looks pretty good from here, except for this little bit up top. And I can just go in behind and trim that away. There you go. Making sure that's not visible anywhere. Yeah, it looks good. I can put that scrap stuff, I can throw out the little scraps, put aside the other bigger pieces in case I need them later. And we're going to make some ears next. So the easiest way to make your ears the same size and same shape is to sketch out your shape and then fold it over and um, cut them uh, at the same time. So I'm going to kind of do a half of a heart shape. I'm sorry, I don't have enough room here on the camera. There we go. I'll shove some stuff out of the way. So I'm going to kind of do a half of a heart. And again, it's really hard to see with pencil, but I didn't want to use pen because that I might not be able to get that out of the way when I was after it's been cut and I don't want it to be show, seen. So I'm going to fold those in half and then cut both ears out at the same time. And I'm going to leave this one looking a little jagged because bear ears are, are kind of fluffy and, and they're not straight, uh, you know, perfectly straight in even with hit, with the hair. So I've got one side there and the other side there, so it looks like a heart, and then I just cut it in half. And voila, two ears. So this is where your glue is going to come in. You can't really sew it to your hoop. Um, I suppose you could uh, sew it to the very back, but you could make your ears much bigger. But this is a pretty easy solution. You're just going to make sure you apply plenty of glue to the um, edge of your felt there. And then glue it in place. Make sure you let it dry completely before you move on to the next step. Because um, if you're impatient like I am, you're going to have trouble with your ears wanting to fall off while you're trying to sew your inner ear uh, on there, as you will see in the next step. <laughs> but get them in the right spot. Make sure you, you're happy with how they look. And wait. <laughs> let them dry. All right. I've let mine dry mostly. As you'll see, I got impatient. My ears are in place. And now I'm going to cut some inner ear designs. Now you can do any shape you want. 
uh, I'll show you two different examples. I'm going to have my bear be have two different ears. I'm going to do kind of a heart shape and a circle shape. But you're going to want to make sure it fits inside the interior of the ear completely. So first I'm going to cut out a heart out of my darker brown felt. see here I think it's too big yeah it hangs over the sides so I'm gonna have to trim that a little bit just a little you can keep holding it up to see if it if it fits Yeah, it's better, but one of the tops of the heart's a little pointy, so I'm going to round that out a little bit. All right, so there's my heart ear, or inner ear, and now I'm going to do a circle. You can do the same as I did, or you can do both hearts, you can do both circles, you could come up with your own shape, you could do squares. Trim that a little bit. There you go. So next up is using the running stitch again and getting them in place. So I've got my circle and my heart. Adjust that edge a little bit. And we're going to do just like what we started with the nose. We're going to put that, use a running stitch to, uh, with the brown, brown floss to secure them in place. You probably have enough brown floss if, uh, used um, from leftover already on your needle. I'm going to move that out of the way for the moment. And you can see my ear was starting to come off because I was impatient. I didn't wait for it to dry all the way. <laughs> all right. So I waited, let my ears dry completely. I sewed on my round ear. And now I'll show you how you do the heart. Because I'm a little more patient now. <laughs> and you don't need to sit through with both of those. There we go, because it's just like you did with the nose. You leave a little bit of a tail and do the running stitch on the outer edge of your shape. And it doesn't matter what shape you'd use, uh, whether you do a heart, a circle, square, a couple of triangles. Yeah, my floss getting caught there. You can the running stitch. You use the same method anyway. And I just started at the top because it's a little easier to start there when it's so close to the hoop. Because then you're you're. Fingers aren't in the way while you're trying to hold the shape, the ear, and the hoop at the same time in one hand while working on the floss. Few more stitches. Yeah. 
and my needle came off my floss again. <laughs> so I'm going to re-thread this. Sometimes when you work too fast, you lose your grip on the needle and it just pulls right off the floss. It happens. Get this. My floss kept splitting, so it took me a little bit longer than usual to rethread it. Okay, there we go. Now I can finish. A few more stitches. It always happens at the most inconvenient time. I think one or two more. Let's see. That's good. All right, I can secure the back. Um, with the ears, I would recommend just tying a knot for, with the, your leftover floss and where you started, your tail, and then trimming it just because you don't want the chance of the, of the floss sticking out from behind the ears. It just makes it a little bit neater. <clears throat> Here we go. Well, there's the ears, at least most of them. All right, next up, we're going to take care of the eyes. Uh, you can make them big, you can make them little. I cut off a chunk of my black felt here, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball <laughs> doing some a couple of ovals. I'm folding my fl uh, felt over again so that I get them the same size and shape just like I did with the ears. That way I don't have to try and figure out how to get two together. So I cut that in half and just trim it up to make it a nice smooth oval. But just felt bits off my bear. Let's see. I made these eyes a little bit bigger than the first one. There we go. Figure out where I want them positioned. And you can see I secured these eyes with, um, let's see, in the, my original one I did some French knots. And in this one I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use my white floss and I'm going to use a chain stitch but I'm just doing one chain for each. There's a little bit of white thread on that one, so take that off. So start from the back. And remember with the chain stitch, you start with the back. Hold that in place while you pull your thread through. And you're going to go back down almost exactly where you came out, but make sure you leave a loop that you can catch. And I'm going to make this pretty big. I'm going to position, figure out how I want it positioned. And then you come up to where you can catch your loop. And because I'm not doing more, I'm just going to tack that one down as if it was the end of a chain. The outside of the thread there. 
once that's done, you may need to use your needle and kind of position the thread the way you like it. In case it clumped up a bit. There we go. Just like that. And then you can fasten off and do the other eye. All right. Get some more white thread floss here. And I'm going to try and put a French knot in the middle to make it more like a Pupil of the eye. Let's see. That didn't show up very well. I may have to redo that one. But I did a little French knot there. It just doesn't show up very well. All right, so I did the other eye, did a bigger French knot, and I'm going to go back and do a better one in this eye because it was annoying me. <laughs> so remember with a French knot, you pull through most of the way, leave a little bit of a tail, and you wrap it around your needle twice. Oh, make sure it doesn't slide off. And then you go back down close to where you came out. <clears throat> and pull through. Yeah, it's a little better. So I've got a French knot and my chain stitch on both eyes. All right. Next up, we're going to do the nose, the rest of the nose. So I've got my, get my stuff out of my way here. I've got my black embroidery floss. And to make sure that I get a nice um, thing, I'm going to, you know, start with my pulling my floss through, leave a tail. I'm going to do the outline of the area I want first. And I'm going to do just a little triangle. So this will make it easier to fill in nice and evenly. So I'm going to do the base. I'm going to go back to the point. And then do the other side. And now I can use the satin stitch to fill it in. So I'm just going to go back and forth across the shape, filling it in. If it's easier to turn your work, feel free to. Remember, you're going to come down right next to where you left off just so that it looks like it's one continuous thread. Now if you see that there's a little spot left over where some brown's poking through you can go over it again. If you want your nose to be a little more um, prominent than the rest of the snout you can go over it a second time. You should have plenty of black thread for that. So 
little bit more. Go down. There we go. There's a little spot there that's some, got some brown. So I'm just going to go over it one more time. And there's the nose. Just going back and forth, back and forth with the satin stitch. Fasten off. Trim it. If you want to tie it in a knot to be super secure, you can, but it's not necessary. All right, next we're going to do the mouth. For this, you'll need your pink floss. If you want your mouth to be delicate, I would suggest um, splitting the thread, and we're gonna use the back stitch for this one. If you want it to look more, um, stand out more, I would suggest using um, uh, the, a full chunk of the thread, but I put that some of the pink aside to leave some for the ears later. And I'm just going to start under my nose. Make sure to leave a little tail. I split this thread into three strands. And then, so I've set my first stitch, and now I'm just going to back stitch up to meet that. I don't want my mouth to be very big, so I'm just going to do a couple more. And then off to either side. So I'm just going to do a straight line of a couple stitches on either side of that. Start on the left side. And I'm making really small stitches here. Because there's not a lot of space. So we'll have a really delicate bear's mouth. And just a little bit more on the other side. If you don't want to do the back stitch, you could easily do a split stitch for this as well. It's your choice. Any of these stitches, um, I would you can substitute uh, pretty much one for the other, however you like. Um, for the nose, you could do a star stitch there instead of a satin stitch if you prefer that. That would look cute. Or you could use a star stitch for the eyes instead of the chain stitch. He might look like he was sleeping, but... A couple more back stitches here. But that's the nice thing about embroidery is that there's plenty of stitches to choose from to get you the look that you want. There we go. Here's my little bear's mouth. It's a little bit thin there, but, you know, and I might go back over that later, but that's, uh, that's fine. I don't want it to be really prominent. All right. Almost done. All right. 
Next, we're going to add some detail to the ears. So I'm going to take um, my pink thread and put in some cross stitches. I'm using the leftover floss that I had on my needle from the mouth. And I'm just going to do about three X's just to give the ears a little bit of a pink detail. So many animal ears have pink inner ears. Remember with the cross stitch, you go from left to right, top to bottom to make an X. Go. I'm going to do one top and two below. Let me go echo the triangle shape of the rest of the bear's nose and mouth. As with all the other things that we learned with this embroidery workshop, you want your stitches to try and try and make sure your stitches are consistent in size. Like that. And this one's got a little, it's a little short on one part of it, so went over that second time, fastened off, and I can trim it. And now I can do the other ear. I'm out of thread there, so I'm going to get the other part, the second half of my pink thread. Put that floss on my needle. Sorry, this part's off screen. I have to... Bring it up close to my old eyes. All right. Once you've got the floss on your needle, you can do the other side. And I think to make it a little interesting, I'm going to do two on top, one on the bottom with this one. It's kind of the opposite of the other ear. Make sure you leave a tail. <clears throat> There you go. One more. Yeah, that one's a little short, so I'm going to go over it again so you can see the full effect of the X. That's better. I'll fix this one, too. Like I said, you want your stitches to look consistent. And then I'll do one more underneath, centered. I 
like so. And I can fasten off. Nice and secure. All right. There's our cross stitch. There's um, our uh, chain stitch and French knot, our satin stitch and our back stitch. And running stitch throughout. All right, if you have some pink floss left over and you want to, you can add a lazy daisy flower to your bear. I'm going to use the full bit of the floss and you can add it to the right or the left side. This way you get to use another stitch. It's going to take me a minute here to get this threaded. And sometimes when it's, it's harder to thread uh, a full strand of floss, all six strands, than um, when you've separated it. So, all right, got my floss threaded, and I'm going to do one quick lazy daisy flower up in this corner here. And you're going to be careful that you don't um, get too close to the hoop because then you'll have trouble with your petals. So remember with lazy daisy, it's basically the chain stitch. So you come up, leave a tail. Go back down really close to where you left off. Catch the loop. And here's tricky because I have to work at the edge of the bot, uh, the back hoop there. Make sure that's big enough. Tack down the outside of the edge of the pedal. There we go. See how close it is to the hoop. And I think I'm just going to do four petals. So up from the back, back down, making sure it doesn't get caught in the hoop. Back down, catching your loop there. Stick that needle through, tack it down on the outside of your thread, like so. All right, we'll do two more petals. Up from the back, back down right next to it. Catch the loop. Go back down. One more. Tack down the loop. And I like how that looks. So I can fasten it off. When you're done, you can trim any of the long, loose threads if you want. And you're done. Congratulations. I hope you enjoyed it.